Hi, I'm Danny, and welcome to my channel. For today's video, I have my February update to the Panners Pan Project Pan. This was created by Elizabeth or at Cookie Pans over on Instagram, and I do have her link down below. Basically, this is our opportunity to pay tribute or homage to our favorite panners in the community. We are to choose 10 at a time and choose a product that reminds us of that panner. And I know that some people are doing five panners at a time. You can do this however works for you. It is open to anybody who would like to join and there is no end date. I want to say that I started this project back in October of 2020. I have been doing this for a little bit over a year and I'm excited to say that I have two panners rolling out this update. I do link every person down below with their Instagram or the YouTube, both if they have that so that you can go find them and give them a follow or go check out their channel and find some new panners to watch. So let me go ahead and start at the top of my list. I'm gonna start with the panner that has been in here the longest and then go all the way down through the, how many did I roll in last time? One, I wanna say three that I rolled in last time, four. So I had four new panners last time and two new panners that I'm rolling in this update. So the person that has been in here the longest is Monica. Her channel is Beauty with Monica. For her, I was working on my Jeffree Star Magic Star Translucent Setting Powder. I had worked on this 237 times, or I should say I have used this 237 times for the last update. I have used it 23 more. This is where I was, and as you can see, it is completely gone. I have finally finished this Jeffree Star powder, and I can get one more item of his out of my collection. I'm really excited about this. This was a decent powder. I don't support him. I will not be repurchasing it, but I'm really happy that I was able to finally finish this so I can take it out of the project. So Monica will be rolling out. That powder got 260 uses for me. The next person that has been in here the longest is Deb. For Deb, I rolled in an eyeshadow single that she gave me. This is from Makeup Geek and it is in the shade Daydreamer. As of the last update, I had used this eyeshadow 16 times. I have used it an additional five times and this is what it is looking like. It's just a really pretty lavender shade. I really have been enjoying wearing this one. I'll give you a swatch. It's so pretty. This is the first time I've ever tried Makeup Geek eyeshadows at all so I'm happy that I have one to try out actually Deb sent me nine and so I'm happy that I have this one to try out wait no Deb sent me 11 <laughs> so anytime I see makeup geek eyeshadows they definitely remind me of Deb next is Lena and for Lena I rolled in this MAC Spellbinder shadow in the shade wishful thinking Lena has several of these well I don't know I've seen her working on at least one I want to say she probably has a couple of them <laughs> And uh, I rolled these in because she's the only other person I've seen that actually has these and works on them in, in her projects. So as of the last update, I had used this 11 times. I have used it this past month the additional nine times, and this is what it is looking like right now. So I did have pan in it before. This product does move around. My goal was to use this 20 times, and I have done that. So Lena will be rolling out of the project as well. This is such an interesting formula. It's very powdery, kind of a, a loose powdery eyeshadow. I don't know how to describe it to anybody and I've had people ask me to describe it and I'm not quite sure how to do it. This is it right here, just a beautiful deep purple shade. This product does move around and it is magnetic and so it will fill back up the pan. It's, it's really strange, but it's really pretty at the same time. So Lena will be rolling out of this project as well. The next person that I have rolled in here is Becca. Her channel is Becca Hope. And for her, I rolled in my ABH Norvina palette because she had panned the Bad Habit Luna palette. So I rolled in the shade Soul. As of the last update, I had used Soul five times. I have used Soul an additional five times. And this is what it is looking like. So not that much usage in here. I've gotten 10 uses in it but it still looks pretty new. I do use a big fluffy brush every time I use this eyeshadow simply because that is my first transition shade since it, since it is such a pale purple shade. Of course, as I swatch it, I just put lotion on my hand so it looks a lot darker, but this is it right here. So it is a very pale purple shade and I do use it 
like the first shade that I go into my transition area with with the big fluffy brush so it's going to take me a little bit to hit pan in this shade. So 10 uses and still many more to go. Next is Jaylon. For Jaylon, I did randomize a prompt from her project that she created, The Child of the 80s, and I got a bright, colorful product. It's Girls Just Want to Have Fun. So I chose to roll in this single, Sugar Pill Single in the shade Midori. As of the last update, I had used this six times. I have used it an additional five, and this is what it is looking like right now. So you can tell that I'm definitely working on it. I do like to pair this with a green eyeshadow that I'm working on in my Pan Those Eyeshadows. This is a swatch of it right here. So these two do work really well together. This is the only Sugar Pill single I have, so I have no idea how deep the pans go, and I guess we'll find out. I'm at 11 uses, and I still haven't hit pan in this one. Next is Jennifer Nash. She is over on Instagram only. If you follow Jennifer, then you know she completely panned this face palette. This is the Cover FX Perfector face palette. I have mine in the shade Light Medium. This is beautiful. I absolutely love the formula on this. So I decided that I wanted to roll in the contour shade to work on for Jennifer. As of the last update, I had used the contour shade 17 times. I have used it an additional seven, and this is what it is looking like right here. So I've gotten 24 uses out of this. I don't see pan anywhere, and my goal is to hit pan. If, it, if I'm able to hit it really easily, then I was going to try to make it a finish goal, but I still haven't hit pan after 24 uses, so I'm just going to keep working on it and see how many uses it takes me to hit pan. So Jennifer is staying in the project as well. Just shuffle these around. And then next, I should say the next four are people that I did roll in last update. The first one I rolled in is Courtney. Again, she is over on Instagram. Poor Courtney cannot catch a break. She was Barbie Law 06, and then her account got hacked, and so she changed it, and then she started up a new account, and now that one has been hacked. So Courtney is now back at Barbie Law 06. I will have the correct Instagram link to her down below. Please go give her a follow. She is starting over from the second for the second time in just a couple of months and has lost all of her photos. I can't imagine how frustrated I would be if that happened to me, not just once, but twice. So please go give Courtney a follow if you've been wondering where Courtney is. That's, that's why she doesn't have a channel so she can't tell everybody what's going on or where to find her. So please, like I said, go follow her down below. So for Courtney, I always think of beautiful lipsticks when I see her. So I rolled in this Bite Beauty lipstick in the shade Maple. This was brand new when I rolled it in. I should say I probably used it once in the 365 Days of Libby's Challenge. I have used it seven times and this is where I got down to. So this looks like a lot of progress for seven uses, but you have to remember the lipsticks are usually pretty pointy when they're brand new bullets. And so I tend to wear down the very point of the bullets. So at the very beginning when I start using a lipstick, I do see a lot of progress immediately. And then of course it does slow down. I am wearing this lipstick today. Let me do a swatch over here. It is a very warm toned, uh, kind of red and I did have to use a lip liner I didn't have to but I did use a lip liner to tone it down a little bit this was way too orange toned to go with the eye look that I have so I am wearing this mixed together with the ColourPop and Bretman Rock lippy pencil in I forget what the name of it is it'll be on the screen so that is what I am wearing on my lips today and I'm going to go ahead and take this off because I know that's going to get on my sweater so that's what that lipstick looks like. Seven uses, my goal is to completely finish it. The next one that I rolled in was Katarina. Her channel is Katarina's Vanity. If you have followed her, then you know she has completely panned this modern Renaissance eyeshadow palette. When I see it, I, I'm reminded of her, her perseverance to keep going. She panned it for longer than a year to get it completely finished. So for her, I rolled in the shade Red Ochre. So as of the last month when I rolled it in, it did have a lot of progress on it. I have used it eight times this month. This is what it's looking like now. However, I didn't use up all of this. I did take the grand majority of this and I did make a Franken shadow. So I will pop a picture up on the screen of what the Franken shadow looked like. I did mix red ochre with a little bit of the shade Ring Light from the Morphe and James Charles palette. 
it was a thin layer across the bottom, I, and this is what it's looking like now. So anytime I use this, I will put a mark down for red ochre. Anytime I use red ochre by itself, I will put a tally mark down here. <laughs> you can see the colors of all the swatches. So there is just the little, littlest bit left of this. I can give you a swatch, but it is a really thin layer. This is my first ever Franken eyeshadow, <laughs> and I was really nervous about doing it. So I didn't Franken that much just in case I didn't like it. So this is the Franken, and you know, I can give you a swatch of red ochre near it so you can see and compare the two. So it did add a little bit of shimmer to it and made it a little bit lighter, and I really like using it as a shimmer shade. Kind of pulls a little bit more brown on the lid than it does kind of the brick red, but I think it's really pretty. So I do want to finish using this up, and then I may Franken some more red ochre. I do, next time I Franken, I think I am going to add a little bit more of Love Letter to it to make it a little bit more red. That way I do have more of a red shimmer. So we'll see. When I make a ne the next Franken, I will take pictures, of course, and include it in these updates. So eight more uses. My goal is to completely finish Red Ochre, so that'll take a little bit of time. The next person that I rolled in is Lainey, and Lainey does have a love of indie brand eyeshadows. So I rolled in this palette that has all my Cleona and Terra Moons eyeshadows in here. I have 22, and my goal for Lainey is to use every single one of these one time each. So this is what it's looking like. These are Terra Moons. Everything over here is Cleona. I did wear this eyeshadow. This is called Chalice, and this is a Cleona eyeshadow. I did use this one. I wore it in my most recent video of the 50 Shades of Purple. And then I actually have three of these eyeshadows on my lids today. I have this one called Fortune Teller on the outer portion of my eyelid. And then I have this one called Orion's Belt on the inner portion of my eyelid. And then I have this one called Moontide on my inner corner. So I will give you swatches of all these. Maybe I should move over to my other hand. And hopefully it'll pick up the shifts in here. This first one is the shade Chalice. So it is gold to kind of a red. Hopefully you can see that. And then we're going to go over to... This one is gorgeous. This one is Fortune Teller. It goes from blue to purple to red. It is stunning. <laughs> and then I put on the shade Orion's Belt. And this one, it, it, okay, how is it looking to you guys? So it's kind of silvery and a light blue, and then it is a, the deepest, most beautiful turquoise color. There you go. Hopefully you can see it there. So it does have lots of shift in that one. And then in the very inner corner, I thought this shade was a little bit more translucent than it is, and I thought it would be just a lighter color that would work well in the inner corner. And I think it does work well in the inner corner. I just had no idea how many different colors were in here. And this one is called Moontide. So you can see it kind of is a gold, light pink, and then it has this purple and a little bit of blue. I am having so much fun with these eyeshadows. I think I'm addicted and I think I understand why so many people love these indie brand eyeshadows. So I have used four eyeshadows so far for Lainey and I have 18 more to go. So like I said, the dark blue's out here and then the turquoise is here and then this incredible shifting one here is in the middle corner. So that is my update for Lainey. And then the final person that I rolled in last time is Anna. Her channel is Maximalism Rehab. Anna is trying to go cruelty-free. Cruelty so I rolled in four perfumes that I have from Atelier Cologne that are not cruelty-free. And my goal is to finish using all of these for Anna. So I did not even touch these three. I decided to work on one of these at a time. So the one that I have been working on this month is called Cedar Atlas. When I rolled it in, it was all the way up to here. I have used it 12 times and I am all the way down to here. Hopefully you guys can see, maybe you can see where that line is in the bottle. This has a beautiful cedar scent. It is very, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not masculine, it's not feminine. It can go either way. <laughs> I forget, the, the word has totally escaped my mind. So I think this could go for either men or for women. It has a beautiful cedar scent. Every time I smell it, it reminds me of this jewelry box I had as a kid. So I've really been enjoying this one. I have 12 uses on this. It is 
I'll probably have this empty for the next update and maybe start working on the next one. But until I finish all of these, Anna will be staying in the project. So since I have finished two items, I have well, I have finished this one and I have hit goal on this, it is time to roll in two new panners. The first person that I want to roll in is Leah. Her channel is Leah Embo here on YouTube. She is from Canada and she is a nurse. I believe she works in a trauma ward. So I think that is incredible. Hats off to her and all the nurses out there who have been working tirelessly to help all of us. Leah is an amazing project panner. And of course, like me, she loves her eyeshadows and she creates the most beautiful eyeshadow looks. She's really talented with all the colors and the way she mixes them together. One of the palettes, or I should say the brand that reminds me the most of Leah is Melt Cosmetics. I know she has uh, at least one of their palettes, if not a couple of them. I always think of her when I see the Melt 420 palette. It is rolled into some of her Panlo's eyeshadows and other projects. And because it has such a beautiful pattern at the bottom, Leah always tries to hit pan at the top where there isn't that pattern so it's not disturbed or ruined in any way and I don't blame her. She also rolled it into a project where she, I don't know if she had to randomly choose a palette Whatever it was, it happened to be April 20th, so she said since it's 420, she's gonna roll in that palette. That always made me chuckle. So anytime I see that palette, it makes me think of her. The only Melt palette I have is one that I just purchased recently. It is the Melt Amor y Mariposas uh, palette. I have the box. It is really reflective, which is why it's off, but the inside is made of velvet. This. Just packaging is beautiful. So this is what it looks like. Just the beautiful butterflies on there. They're nice and glossy. When you open it up, let me take off the plastic here. You can see all of the beautiful butterflies imprinted into the eyeshadows. Like this is a palette. I don't want to mess up all those beautiful butterflies. So I completely understand <laughs> why Leah has panned them the way that she has. So. For Leah, I'm going to be rolling in this palette and I want to use every shade in this palette at least one time. I want to dip into it. I want to get familiar with the Melt formula. It's probably going to take me a couple months because I am working on lots of other eyeshadows and I'll probably just do like one eye look a month. We'll see, but I do want to keep everybody in this project in for a couple of months so I won't be doing all the looks just in one month. I'll just I'll do them slowly and I will take pictures or I may just wear them during the updates for this project so that I can show you the eyeshadows that I have worn out of this palette. So that is for Leah. And then the other person I want to roll in is Kim from Teacher Loves Beauty. If you guys are not following Kim, you need to go do so. She recently started up her channel and I'm aiming by recent like like a year ago. So it is a newer channel, but she's gotten Lots of subscribers. I remember when she hit her 100 subscriber mark and she is over 200 now. So I think she needs a lot more followers. So if you haven't checked out her channel, please go do so. She is the one who created the Handmaid's Tail Project Pan. She joins so many different project pans, but of course, since she created the Handmaid's Tail Project Pan, that is the thing that I associate the most with her. I have enjoyed watching her updates as well as everybody else who is doing this project. I really wanted to join, but I just could not fit it into my schedule. So for Kim, I'm, I have chosen one of the prompts from The Handmaid's Tale. I went through and I looked at all of them and I chose the one that I thought I could, like I could find a way to work it in <laughs> and you'll see. So the prompt that I chose was, says The Handmaid's Red. The color of their uniform is symbolic of childbirth. It portrays sin. A product that you think was a sin to buy or something expensive or not needed. So I went with something that is expensive. It's a sin to buy because of how expensive it is. And so this is the Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. Sorry, it is very reflective. It is brand new. I have not even taken the paper out of here. So it is completely brand new. I will take weights, I will mark it, but my goal is to completely finish it. So I chose this prompt because of everything that I am panning. I figured if a, if a powder was rolling out, I wanna be able to roll a powder in. This is 10 grams and valued at $39. This is 10 grams and you know Jeffree Star stuff is expensive, but it's only $22. But the Maybelline Fit Me powder is 20 grams. So twice as much product as this, $8. So, 
$8 versus half as much product for $39. I think it's a sin to pay this much. I think the formula on this is beautiful. I really enjoy this powder. So I will enjoy using it. However, I do think it's ridiculously expensive. Obviously, I cannot get a hold of it anymore because Beck is gone. So I want to use this up before the Hydra Mist type feeling is gone. I do really enjoy that. I know some people it's not their favorite thing. It doesn't bug me at all. So this is going to be rolling in for Kim in kind of an homage to her Handmaid's Tale project pan. Please go check her out. Check out everybody that I have put into this project. I do have my playlist linked down below. Kim is panner number 50 that I have rolled into this project. So I have rolled out 40, including the two that just rolled out today. There are 40 other panners that I have already talked about and all that. If you are newer to my channel, please be sure to go check out that playlist so that you can see all these other amazing project panners that I highly recommend. That is everything that I have for you. If you look for the hashtag, is I believe it's Panners Pan. I'll put it on the screen. I don't know if it's Panners Pan or The Panners Pan. You will find lots of other people doing this. I enjoy watching other people's updates because I find so many other amazing project panners to go follow. And uh, I enjoy supporting everybody else who is into project panning. I love watching the videos. It just... I don't know, it's what brings me, it brings me joy, brings me happiness. So if you haven't, I hope that you'll please subscribe to my channel before you go. While you're there, ring that bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for stopping by. Mm -hmm.